The Edo State Political Space was a stir yesterday as a federal court sitting in Abuja notified the governorship primaries of the People's Democratic Party, which produced Dr. Asue Godale as its candidate for the September 21st election in the state. The court, in the judgment delivered by Justice Iangekwa, held that the People's Democratic primaries, uh, Party's primaries conducted on February 22nd failed to meet the requirements of the Electoral Act of 2022 and for the conduct of public uh, polls, the verdict of the party was actually downplayed and the judgment saying that Godalo had not been removed as its uh, flag bearer. And of course, uh, joining me to discuss this is Kudus Alalafia is, of course, the head of chambers at Chinoduji Udora and Co. And uh, Clemency's Associates uh, from Nigeria. Thank you for joining. And also I have uh, Perez Okwere, is the Deputy Director General Media, New Media for the People's Democratic Party, Guba Campaign Management Council, also joining from Nigeria. Gentlemen, thank you for joining in. Let me start off with you. Uh, of course, a Perez. Uh, what is the official position of the uh, Ugodalo campaign, you know, as regards this uh, verdict? You know, um, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed in the in the media in the country because what happened in the court yesterday is completely different from what the media is reporting, and it's quite embarrassing that. The Nigerian media is not doing the proper, a proper job. You know, mm. it's, it's quite embarrassing to see. Okay, would, would you would you want to? Different... I'm sorry. Okay, so would you want to set the record straight? If at all you feel some yeah. items were left out. Yes, the court, the court did not make any such pronouncement yesterday. There was no such pronouncement. First of all, there was no pronouncement on the mm. uh, candidacy of As Dr. Aswe Godalo. Secondly, the court did not even make any 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 such pronouncement. What happened yesterday is an embarrassment because the, the uh, one the lawyer by the name uh, Adaze Wanta came out of the courts while the, 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 the court was in, in, in session, came out and announced and did a video saying that the court has nullified the candidature of the PDP gubernatorial candidate, which is completely false. And he put that information out there and then, and then people picked it on social media and then it just went viral. You know, there was no such pronouncement by the judge. There was no such pronouncement by the court. So what happened yesterday in court, according to you, sir? Yeah, so what, yeah, so what happened was that, you know, there were some um, delegates who mm. had approached the court, you know, to say that they were excluded from the PDP primaries, three delegates. And, you know, the law is very clear. It is the internal party affair because the party had done, um, it's not even the, they were excluded from the primaries. It, they claimed that they were excluded from the ad hoc delegate election, you know, and the, 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 the election is a, it's a, it's an internal affair of the party, which the court have set, you know, that record clear and directly so many times in the country. You know, there are so many cases where the court have said, that the the, the uh, conduct of political primaries is an internal affair of the political parties, and that has been has been established by the court several times in Nigeria. Mm. So these three uh, these three uh, uh, people who claim to be delegates in election who have no uh, uh, local standing to go and approach the court because the law is very clear. You know, it says that it is only. The, the aspirants who have powers, who have the, the, the rights to challenge to challenge the process, not even delegates. So these three delegates approached the court, and the, the and the and the court did not even make any any pronouncement on the primaries itself. There was no pronouncement made yesterday. So I'm I'm shocked as to where how the media houses got the reports that they were all so, publishing. So so what is the position of your candidate right now in the race? Our, you know, we are not even disturbed because there was no, there was no um, pronouncement by the court. The court never said our candidate is not was not duly elected. Our court never, the court never said 
it was nullified the candidature of our uh, the, 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 the the candidacy mm. of our, our, our candidate. Mm. You know, so there was no such pronouncement made. So we are going ahead with our campaigns. The PDP, you see, the PDP is, is on ground in Edo. You know, if you if you if you do your 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 findings, you see that the PDP is poised to win the gubernatorial election in Edo. The PDP is a party that is fully on ground. So you know, this uh, uh, lies and propaganda emanated from. Uh, the opposition yesterday, because the, the 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 lawyer who had gone out of court yesterday to make that video is an APC lawyer, and we know his antecedents, mm. and he has done that not so not to he just did that video to mislead you know the public yesterday, and and we have we have filed a petition against that lawyer to the NJC, you know, so that he will be called to order. All right. All right. Uh, I mean, uh, let me no, leave you no, for a we moment. Are, we are going ahead with our campaigns. We are we are going ahead with our campaigns, and we are we are we are fully on ground. There's no so, such. So, there's, so, no, so, there's no. There's nothing stopping us. Okay, so so uh, I will come back to you. But uh, we have, of course, a, a lawyer in the house who maybe might want to, uh, you know, break this down from a legal angle. Now, Justice Iyang Echo in the judgment held that the People's Democratic Party primary, which held on the 22nd of February, failed to comply with the provisions of the Electoral Act 2000. Uh, 22, the guidelines for the conduct of the poll uh, and the party's constitution. I would like a legal uh, breakdown of this. Uh, let me come to you. What, of course, uh, uh, from a legal standpoint, uh, how does this make sense? Okay, um, thank you. Um, good evening, Nigerians. Um, <clears throat> if we are going to be relying on what is reported in the media, uh, because personally, I have not seen the certified true copy of the ruling of the court. But that notwithstanding, a couple of uh, media outlets had reported it. And um, if it is to go, if we are going to go by that, it means that as it stands, the candidacy of the People's Democratic Party at the uh, September 2024 general election coming up in Edo is, uh, is, is, is nowhere to be found, if I can put it that way. Because once a court void an action, once a court puts uh, a particular activity as rendered it null and void, it is of no effect, and it is as if the PDP has no candidates in the upcoming election. And, you know, uh, for me, by what was reported in the media, uh, an, aggrieved, an aggrieved party member who was entitled to attend the primary election but was denied, now sued in a representative capacity uh, up to about, I think, 300 and above 300 um, delegates. So if it is to go by that because the provision of the Electoral Act, particularly Section 29, is to the effect that before you can present anybody, before any political party can present any candidate to the uh, INEC, that's the Electoral Umpire, such candidate must have come out from a valid primary election duly held. So if the court now says that primary election was not valid, it therefore means that the interpretation of Section 29 of the Electoral Act 2022 is simply, is simply put, there is no candidate for PDP if it is to go, if we are to go by what was reported in the media. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, let me come back to you, Perez. You said that... Um... What was reported was largely uh, not the reality and that uh, uh, legally your candidate is still in the race. Um, you also said uh, this uh, is uh, the handwork of some people you suspect. I'd like you to, of course, uh, uh, delve a bit deeper. Who are those you, 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 you're fingering you know, as, as regards uh, uh, being responsible for this disinformation? Well, uh, I, like I said before, I said that while the court proceedings were still ongoing yesterday, you could see that one particular lawyer by the name Adazel Emata came out yesterday and made a video. I made a video saying that the the the, the court has concluded and that the the judge has given his verdict and that the PDP 
candidate has been disqualified, which is far from the truth. That information was 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 peddled out by that lawyer and is completely false. There was no such there was no such pronouncement by the judge yesterday. We had our legal representative at the court yesterday and we've spoken to them and they even granted interviews. If you watch in channels today, the PDP legal advisor was on channels today and he has said it clearly that the judge did not make any such pronouncement. So it's, it's quite unfortunate that we have a media in the country that do not do due diligence mm. in issues like this. Mm. I, I was expecting that I was expecting that some of those media houses would have gotten hold of the the certified to copy of the case before coming out to report something that is completely false. And it's, it's not the first time we've seen we've seen it. We've seen where the media will pick information on social media and they will report it as if it's something that they have they have a, a, a first hand knowledge about. We've seen it before, so it's not the first time we have seen it. We've seen them do it over and over again. It's not something that is alien to us. So I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that, the, you know, I, I was suspecting that the uh, media uh, should have had their I'm correspondent sorry, there. They would report what was, what was actually, you know, uh, uh, so, so uh, Perez, are you are you telling me that um, uh, all of the court processes that happened yesterday um, actually had n uh, nothing to do exactly with or tamper with the candidature of your of your of your uh, of your person, the person you represent? Is well, that what you're like saying? Said, because. Because I can read some of the excerpts of yesterday's court ruling. Okay. So where did you get your, your court ruling from? Was it are you ready from the certified copy or are you from what the media reported? Um, have, you, I, have you gotten a certified copy? Do you have a, a copy? Do you have a certified copy of the judgment with you there? We had people to of course uh, uh, witness it, and that of course is why we're having this conversation. So no, that's why I'm asking you, we, what exactly? We had, our legal team. we had our legal team, and if you if you watch channels yesterday, uh, a member of our legal team was was on channels yesterday, and he explained that there was no time that the court made such pronouncement. So, so what you are saying it? categorically right now that uh, Mr. Aswayi Godalo is still in the race legally. Yeah, Aswayi Godalo is the candidate to beat in this election, and mm. that is the truth. Okay. You know what was reported by the media yesterday is completely false. You know, mm. I, I, was, I would expect that the media right now would, you know, approach the courts, you know, or approach the political parties. We are still trying to get the certified copy of the of the case, you know, and, you know, that's what they should be looking at so that they can report the true story that came out from that court yesterday. It's what was reported was it's an embarrassment, you know, on the, on the media. Mm. All right. Now, let's, of course, talk about uh, 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 what the election, of course, uh, pertains, particularly uh, for the people of a Edo state. Uh, we know that this particular uh, election, you know, is a pivotal one uh, because uh, we are seeing a situation whereby we have quite a number of heavyweights and uh, the people of a Edo state, of course, deserve the best. Uh, the People's Democratic Party, you know, is one party, of course, that has held its own in the state. Uh, but within the party... I mean, it seems to be, it's all well within the party at the moment. Well, all is well within the party, within the PDP in those states. The PDP in those states is a party on ground. We have all the machineries, all the, everything on ground to win this election. And, you know, and then if you come back also to those you see that the governor, the current governor have done a lot, you know, in the states. And that's why the PDP is so strong in the state. Couple with the fact that the PDP has presented a candidate that has a history, a, a very rich history of progress. A, you know, a, a, a candidate that has worked, that has been chairman of Sterling Bank, that has been chairman of Nigerian Bureaus, that has been chairman of um, of uh, Levant Oil, that has been member of the board of Heineken, that has been member of the board of Okomu Oils. You know, it, it, you know that he has been chairman in so many corporations. He has a rich, a rich, a very rich history of work has the experience. That is why he's so sellable. You know, if you look at the other parties, no political party has presented the caliber of candidate that the PDP has presented in this election. And Edo people are very intelligent people. They've seen the difference. They've seen the candidate of the PDP. They've mm. seen that he's the most qualified to become the next governor of the state. And that's why they are queuing behind him. Mm. Let me go to you, uh, Kudus, on this one. Now, Kudus, we see a situation here, particularly in Nigeria, where... Uh, 
the judiciary and, of course, uh, doing elections, they seem to go peri pursue. At some point, we have a situation whereby even outside the votes or voting, the judiciary still plays a pivotal role in determining an actual winner. I mean, just before the show came up, we were talking about uh, the UK elections yesterday that, you know, happened quite seamlessly, right? Today, the results, I mean, yesterday, there was, uh, early this morning, the results were announced. The new prime minister has assumed office. No tribunals, no petitions. I mean, business as usual. Uh, my, my question to you is this. Um, right now, looking at our electoral process and system in the country, it seems like the judiciary plays, you know, more of the uh, chunk of the role, particularly in determining the winner. Why is this? Thank you very much. You can see me smiling, even beaming uh, my smile while you were while you were asking your question. You mm. see, um, the issue of um, the judiciary, they are like workers or employees that an employer employs to do certain acts and give them the tools to work with. Now, for whatever the judiciary does, particularly our courts, are the dictate of the law. When we say the law, we mean the Electoral Act, if it is time of election. We mean other regulatory enactments in this regard. Then the question is, who made the law? It is the legislature. The National Assembly makes the law. Who voted, who put the members of the National Assembly <clears throat> in there? It is the people. And that is why the provision of Section 13 of the Constitution says sovereignty belongs to the people. So it is a kind of, it is a matter of garbage in, garbage out. If we bring, if we vote in people that go in there to serve their personal interest, and they get in there, they make laws for the judiciary to enact. I mean, sorry, for the judiciary to, in, to, 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 to interpret, mm. pursuant to section six of the constitution. After all, the constitution of the constitution, I mean, the, the constitution of, the, of Nigeria says by section four, the executive has the, the, gov, the president has the executive function, the National Assembly has the legislative function, while our court has the judiciary function. Now, however, the provision of section uh, four, so to say, now make the power to make law on the National Assembly, which the judiciary will interpret. So if the, if the, uh, judi if the legislature has, make, has enacted certain laws, and it is there for the judiciary to interpret, judiciary don't make law. They do not make law. They are to follow the law stricto sensu and give it the full well, What we are seeing right now is, well, I call it a precedence where even after elections, uh, the declared candidates can't sit easy. You know, they still have to go to different layers of court. Uh, is there a limit to the participation of the judiciary in all of this? Yes, there is. After all, if, if, if candidates do not file petitions, mm. judiciary, our court will not sit. Let's, 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 let's look at this issue of internal party you know, matters, where, yeah. of course, it's also taken to the judiciary. And sometimes you have the judiciary say, look, it's an internal party issue. Uh, you guys should try to resolve it you know, internally. I mean, uh, I would like you to also speak on that. Oh, thank you very much. You see, our court, there are a plethora of authorities right from time immemorial up till the recent cases that was reported by our uh, by our law, various law, law, law report outlets. The Supreme Court has always been emphatic that the court has no issue, has no function in looking into internal affairs of a particular political party. Yeah. And one of such examples is the decision of the Supreme Court in this, uh, uh, the, 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 the case that affirmed the, the election <laughs> of the Kano state governor. Mm. The ratio behind that decision, the Supreme Court simply said, the, all the, the, the crocs upon which the petition of the contender of uh, the governor of Kano State stand are pre-election matters, are matters that borders on 
political i mean uh, internal affairs of that party and it should so be and it is it, it is a way of giving life back to the political parties so that they can be in charge of their full participation mm. if you look at various decisions we have more than that's why i said we have plethora we have more than more than more than 50 of them where the court have said see once it comes to internal affairs of a political party no court has jurisdiction to legislate upon uh, upon such an affairs and they will always at every time push it back to the uh, what do you call it to the political party to go and solve all right but in the event you know behind every general rule there is an exception mm. the exception is that where the political party now violates its own constitution you know that's a matter of law now yes because once you make a law that law ought to stand and of course even a mere agreement between a and b if you present it to the court the court will enforce it talk more of a constitution of a registered political party uh in nigeria so if a political party even while doing their internal affairs violate its own constitution or its own principle then the court will interfere mm. All so right. that is the position. So people should uh, try to understand it from the angle of, okay, if it touches on the constitution or on the principle, then the court will interfere. Any other thing other than that, it's, if it revolves around the internal affairs of their political party, the court will not interfere. Thank you. All right. Let me go back to you, Perez. Now, what should we expect from the uh, Dr. Sue Igudalu campaign team or team in the coming weeks? Particularly well, as that's uh, the, the legal uh, cr uh, crossfire. Like I said before, the the, the, the the candidates, you know, and our campaign is we are moving ahead, we are marching ahead, you know, and we are not even disturbed by these uh, distractions. We are not disturbed. We are forging ahead with our campaign. We are we are strong, and uh, you know, also we are not going to be dragged into issues that we. That would that will have uh, effect on our campaign. So what we do, what we are focused on is taking our message to the grassroots, which is what we have been doing, and we, which is what we have continued to do. And if you must know that before Aswe Godalo emerged as the candidate of the party, he was the only one who travelled around all it in local, local government, you know, taking his message, you know, to all the all the wards and all the units, you know, reaching out to the people at the grassroots. And we are we are, we are going to start that again from next week. Going back to all the 18 local governments of the state, all the wards, all the 192 wards, we are going to take our message to all 192 wards. We set up our campaign structure to all the ward and the unit levels, and we are prepared for the election. We are not distracted by some disgruntled elements who think that they can derail our campaign. You know, what they are. Perez, are you there? I think we lost a uh, connection with Perez uh, there for a moment. But uh, before we, uh, uh, of course, are uh, closing on uh, this first half, let me go back to you, Kudus. Now, Kudus, uh, just quickly, uh, for, I mean, you are a lawyer, you've been part or you've actually seen quite a number of cases, particularly when it comes to electioneering in the country, in Nigeria, where uh, politicians, you know, use, I'm sorry to use the word, use the judiciary as bait or as, a, will I call it, a, 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 you know, that, that pendulum in the pendulum clock, you know, to, to sort of do their bidding. And at some point, it seems to water down the relevance of that very revered sector. My question to you is this, what can be done to ensure that the judiciary still maintains its integrity in times like this? Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's straightforward. Uh, number one, let's start from the angle of appointment of judicial officers. Mm. Let's remove all political undertones. Mm. Every political undertone, let it be removed. Let people be um, appointed based on merit. Number one. Number two, the uh, relevant enactment with respect to the appointment of the um, of the members of the judiciary, particularly the oversight of the executive, I believe should be removed. And that is the area of um, the interference of the executive president or governor to swear in 
uh, you know, blah, 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 like that. Because I believe, let if we are talking about the independence of judiciary, it should be, a, because that is the only organ of government that you can only be qualified for by way of academic background. Mm. If you look at that of the legislature and that of the executive, even a certificate, a, a, a secondary school certificate will take you to become a president. But if you are talking about you being a judge or being a justice of the court of appeal or justice of the Supreme Court, it takes a number of years. If you are talking about going to university, going to law school, you know, having certain number of cases you might have done for you to be appointed as a judge. Mm. And, you know, coupled with the years of experience. So if, the, if for me, I believe if we remove the, the interference of the legislature, mm. sorry, particularly the executive anyway, uh, the legislature can still maintain their own position of scrutinizing whosoever that is brought before them to scrutinize. But you see, all those political undertone and uh, the so-called cutting corners and, and what I mean, you, 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 should, you, once it is removed mm. and people are particularly appointed on merits. On merits. Now, that is where I need to come in. I mean, you've tried to highlight uh, how important it is for the judiciary to be autonomous so that it can perform its functions you know, without uh, being held you know, by any constraint. But how visible is, is, is that? Oh, thank you. Everything still boils down to, just like our slogan, it begins with you. Everything still boils down to individual Nigerian. If we are willing to make this work, it will definitely work. How? Just make sure that people that are representing us at the National Assembly and the State, state House of Assemblies, they, re, they, 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 they amend Mm. the existing enactment in that regard, and let them remove all political interference away from it. So you can see the issue of, okay, the NJC, the NJC has the power to recommend, the, to recommend somebody to a governor or to the president for appointment. But if the, pre, if the governor or the president does not swear in that person, that person would not perform its duty. So, you know, and these are members of political parties that you might have even, you know, given judgment against. Mm. Maybe at one level or the other. Perhaps maybe at the court of appeal level, you were the one sitting as the presiding judge, and you have given judgment against party A. And uh, unfortunately for you, by the time you are being elevated to the Supreme Court, we now have the so-called person you have, give, you have given judgment against being at the hems of affairs. You know, these are people that they don't have... Uh, that, you know, they rely so much on the executive to even enforce their own judgment. Because once the judiciary gives judgment, who enforces it? It is the executive. So, and that is why I will always say that mm. for the true independence of judiciary, mm. it is not only finance. Because people, I don't know why people so much place much attention on finance. But, so, but finance also play a key role. I, I agree. Key role. Because I agree. we know that recently, the, I mean, there was a major review you know, of uh, the salaries. I, 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 yes. I, I agree. But what I'm saying, no, when I, when I say finance, I mean, it goes even beyond salaries. Mm. Because for whatever the judiciary needs, if they want to do renovation or whatever, they have to rely, you know, they have to pass their budget mm. to the executive. Mm -hmm. For the executive to package everything and pass it to the, to the legislature. So in the course of passing, what if the, legis <laughs> the, 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 the executive deem it with, okay, we are not doing this now. Let's put it in abeyance. And that is why we have our courts. Go to several, go to several states and look at their court sittings. I don't just want to be mentioning names of states here that I've been to and it, you, it will wow you. Save for maybe Abuja and Lagos and, of course, maybe Ogun State, that we have a couple of um, fine courtrooms. If you go to some other state, you will weep. All right. Now, let's, let's talk about appointment. For instance, the appointment of a person to the position of the Chief Justice of the Nation, that's Nigeria, shall be made by the President on the recommendation of the National Judicial Council, subject to confirmation of such appointment by the Senate. I mean, when you look at this truly, it seems like, okay, there are layers to uh, the final approval of the individual who becomes um, the Chief Justice. But... I'm using this as case study. Do you think that such appointment, you know, following these levels or these uh, procedures or processes, uh, would you say it's thorough enough to ensure that whoever eventually merges 
the Chief Justice, I mean, that's just a case study, is autonomous, is a person of integrity, is that political, and uh, would, of course, uh, <coughs> not be a stooge of the ruling class. No, that is not the reason behind that enactment. The reason behind the enactment is just to follow the principle of checks and balances to separation of power. You will see that each and every one of the, of the organ of government has something to do with respect to the appointment of our judicial officers. For example, the CGN that you just mentioned. Of course, the NJC, even though we look at it as an, as an agency or as an arm or something under the executive, we know that all members of the NJC are members of the, judicial, of the judiciary. But that notwithstanding, for me, <clears throat> the, 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 the draft men of our constitution, perhaps at the point when they were making that law, their mind is on, okay, <clears throat> don't let a, a, a single arm of government to have an absolute affairs over itself. Let there be checks and balances here and there so that there will be, there will be balance in uh, formula, uh, 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 policy formulation. But you see, the recent circumstances and the, and, and the reality facing everybody in the high is mm. that the political interference people now use in disguise for checks and balances, they will tell you it's checks and balances on paper, but if you deep down, they don't like the English will say, the innuendos, mm. it's political, it's, it's, it's politicking. Mm. So for me, I believe that the principle of checks and balance, yes, can still apply in some other areas. But when it now comes to the appointment of the judiciary, like I said, which is the only arm of government that you can qualify by way of academic background, mm. not just an, a Nikonpu or an idiot cannot just become a judge. You have to go through series of you know, training, and you must have series of experience before you, they can say, oh, sit as a judicial officer. So right. if that is the case, hmm. then let's remove or let's reduce the, the, the essence of checks and balances with respect to the appointment of our judicial officers. All because right. the recent circumstances is that our politicians are now using that checks and balances as a weapon hmm. against a judge who is innocent, who has innocently given a judgment in line with his or her conscience. All right. Sir. And uh, by the time it gets to the appointment, of course, se series of... Se uh, 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 the, the, the current Edo... Kudos, Edo. we need to go. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I mean, it, I, I, I mean there, there's so much to talk about. You know, it's sincerely speaking, but it's fine. But, thank uh, you, it's thank my you pleasure. for being on the program, uh, at least this first half with me on the conversation. Kudos, Alala Fia is, uh, of course, the head of chambers at Chineduji Odora & Co. Uh, Clemences Associates. And, uh, from Nigeria, and also we had uh, joined us, you know, at some point in the program, but we lost him uh, talking about uh, Perez Okbere is actually, you know, a member of the PDP campaign team that's for new media. Gentlemen, once again, thank you for uh, being a part of uh, the show. Now, we need to, at this point, go on a quick break. When we return, we will be going to Kenya, where a lot is happening. Stay with us.